You guys got to come up? All right, well, uh, uh, good morning. It's great to be uh, back in Pinellas County. I want to thank uh, Tommy and Senia from Baycare, uh, Lou Galdieri from Morton Plant uh, for all their hard work uh, over the past many months. Um, uh, exciting day in terms of rolling out uh, something new that is, uh, I think, going to make a real difference in terms of uh, the, 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 the uh, coronavirus response, and particularly for, for our most vulnerable populations. So yesterday, the president announced uh, that the federal government had procured 150 million of these new rapid antigen tests, uh, COVID diagnostic antigen tests. Uh, they basically bought all of Abbott's lab's inventory, and so they're going to apportion it to the states on population. They are going to send it to all nursing homes and long-term care facilities, a lot of them, and then they're going to send the state of Florida 6.4 million on top of that. And so uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about what we're going to do with that. But first, I wanted to, uh, we're going to demo this and just show you by the time I finish my remarks, uh, we'll, we'll have a result. And so the good thing about this is you do not need a lab uh, to do it. You see we have here, we have a nurse here. Uh, it all, everything comes in this box. There's, uh, I think, about 40 of these uh, cards. They have the reagent there. They have the swabs. It is a swab. Um, that goes in both nostrils, but it's not one of the swabs that really kind of gets up in like your brain where you feel like, oh my gosh, this is really bad. So much more pleasant than the typical uh, swab that they're using for the standard PCR test. And that's the re, I think, is that the reagent? Yeah, putting in the reagent. And then all the stuff's right there. So if, uh, like a senior center were to get, get a couple of these, they pretty much don't need anything else than what's already in the box, locked and loaded and ready to go. So it'll be about 15 minutes, but really uh, most of the results, if, if it's positive, it usually pops pretty quickly, so you'll be able to see it. It really is akin almost to like, I, I mean, lighting, the thing like almost like a pregnancy test in some respects. So this is really, really significant because when we're looking at uh, protecting the folks uh, who are most vulnerable, particularly our elderly population, I showed the CDC numbers that they put out. Um, and if you look, it's really dramatic. Uh, the, the under 50, you know, you're 99.98%. If you get infected, you're going to survive or even better. Uh, and then it really goes up dramatically once you hit that 70 plus. And so this is really the demographic that we've worked really hard with in terms of our long-term care facilities, uh, our nursing homes. Uh, Jared's done a really good job in getting a lot of resources. Uh, we've done uh, probably, what, 10, 15 million masks and... 15 million masks, face shields for the staff of the long-term care facilities. We're also, um, uh, you know, we, we did very early on, we're one of the first states to test all the residents and test the staff members. And then once we went through everything once, we started doing uh, week bi weekly testing and we're able to do that. That bi weekly testing was good because they could self swab and then we had it sent to a lab that would turn it around pretty quickly. The problem with some of these other tests is you know, you, you really need them to be administered. Um, this one, it does need to be administered by a nurse. So I think one of the things we're going to have to figure out is some of these nursing facilities, obviously, they have that. Uh, but some of the other places we want to go, you know, they may not necessarily have someone on staff. Is there a way to get a, what's called a CLIA waiver to allow some other folks to be able to administer? Because you see, I mean, you know, you can do it. Um, so I think this is going to be really, really significant. So if you think about 6.4 million tests, uh, that is... Uh, I don't even know that we could we could physically do that many tests. And there's certainly not demand for that many tests right now. Uh, we have uh, uh, capacity just in our drive-through sites that's not even close to, to being uh, utilized uh, due, due to just lack of demand. Look, there's not as much virus. That, that's a good thing. So we're going to, uh, but we, we, we do want to figure out how you can do it. So that's going to be one thing we're going to do. But what we're going to be doing is not just nursing homes, not just long-term care facilities. But we are going to have priority for any senior center, 
any retirement community. If there are some additional long-term care that didn't get the federal shipment, then we would be looking to do that as well. But HHS is shipping that directly. In fact, I think 800 uh, of these facilities in Florida have already gotten this. Uh, even, even as we speak, they have it right now. Florida, we're going to get our shipment to the state probably by the end of the week. Uh, so we want to be able to do that. So you're thinking not just the nursing home that, that may be here in Pinellas County, and you're thinking like Sun City Center over in Hillsborough County. You're thinking other types of senior-dominated uh, facilities. Uh, that is going to be good. And, and the thing I, you, know, you, you come back to is you know, we talk about protecting the people that are most vulnerable. That cannot mean that you just isolate vulnerable people and, and not let them also enjoy life. And so we thought long and hard about that with the visitation for the nursing homes. So we introduced that over a month ago. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say the, the infections in nursing homes have declined dramatically. It's probably a reflection of the decline in the community. But being able to give those folks the ability uh, to reunite and be there in person with family members is a huge part of health. It's a huge part of you know, why these folks uh, you know, you know, enjoy life and want to do that. So, so it's really, really significant that as we're doing these tests, you know, we're not just going to do them, and quite frankly, we built a huge apparatus here in Florida, but it was basically just, hey, anyone wants to test, test. Wasn't always necessarily a method. I think this, there's going to be a good method to it. Obviously, you use it to try to identify infection, particularly in congregate living environments. It's going to be very important. Uh, but I think you can also use it so that folks who may be more vulnerable are able to enjoy life to the fullest. So, for example, if you have a uh, senior who would like to have younger family members come, you know, this is not, these will be available. I mean, this is a 15 minute, 15 minute deal. You can do that. So it really lets people, I think, do more um, and, and really be um, a, part, a part of life. And I think the response has got to recognize that component. We did it with the visitation. I think these tests, that will also be a component. Just think you could have different senior events where if you want to test, you could even test a group of people who are going to get together um, if you wanted to be safe and have the ability to do it. So, so I'm excited about that. We also, the other priority after uh, the vulnerable population is going to be for, uh, for schools. So if you have somebody, a kid, uh, a student that, that, that has symptoms, obviously they're going to be pulled out of class. Right now, we're in a situation where they would likely be isolated. They would get a test, they get sent away to a lab, and there's some lag time. The problem with that is, well, one, um, you know, th we want the student and the parent to know as soon as possible, but two, some, some schools are, are isolating people that may have been in contact. So these are people who are not showing symptoms, and a lot of parents have been frustrated, and I think rightfully so. What I think this does is, if you have that student who, who, who starts developing symptoms, they can be obviously taken out, they can be given this test, and then we'll know within 15 minutes whether it's COVID or not. If it's not COVID, then you should not by any means isolate any healthy students. Now, I personally think that the, the isolation there, um, I think a lot of school districts are doing good. I know there have been some that, that did a lot. Um, and I think that they just be as targeted as possible. But I think this will be really good for that. And so this way, some because kids get sick for a whole bunch of other things except coronavirus. In fact, I mean, you're going to see a, a lot of, of, of traditional seasonal illnesses that, that they do and pass, and, and things are going to be fine. But we, we do want people to know, and we don't want to send people home uh, before we can. So this is, uh, I think, really, really important. And I'm excited when the White House was asking me, how do you want this done? Do you want us to just, you tell us where to send it and then we'll do it and or do you guys just want to get the shipment to you and then you do it? And, and I thought about it and because they're already doing the long-term care, that's a huge component of what we would do. But I was like, I think that it's probably the best to work out of Jared's operation because they do this every day with the logistics. This is um, uh, basically, uh, night, this, they do it every day. And so we'll be able to get it to where I think it needs to go. So, so focusing on all seniors and then focusing on schools. But if you put it in perspective, we're going to be getting 400,000 of these tests a week. Now, we have had some positive corona tests 
in, in schools, but it's been a very, very small. There have been some students who have been isolated who were uh, exposed. But even that, while a larger number than the positive test, is still a very small percentage. So you're talking about if, if each school district had a few thousand of these, you know, that's probably going to be enough uh, to be able to last them for a long time. But of course, we're going to keep getting 400,000 every single week going forward. So this is going to be good. I think it's also going to save the state a lot of money. Uh, we spend, now granted, we use CARES Act dollars or we apply for FEMA reimbursement, so it's not like it all just comes straight out of general revenue, but it's $100 a test. At a minimum, some of the tests are more, right, or some of the antigen tests. So $100 a test at a minimum. And if you think about, you know, today I think we reported 70,000 tests, 75,000. Uh, at the height, we were doing 100 to 120,000, pretty, pretty significant. Uh, Every day now, state's not paying for all those. These guys here at BayCare do tests. All the hospitals—that's a big part of it too. But I mean, it's a lot of money. So these are just going to—these are ours, and we'll give them. And there's not going to be any cost to this. You just do it. You get the result. Do we have a result here yet, or is it—is it done? Is it Negative. Yay. Thank you. He wouldn't have been able to get on the plane going back if he was positive. So it's uh, good to see that. So